effect of moral flaws safeguard your inner workings from the relentless assaults of vice and irresponsibility okay yeah so definitely the ones of the soul are the ones who really <coughs> hard to heal that hurt the most so with this beautiful message let's take a deep breath and connect with our souls with God with Jesus our gratitude of being here today opening up our hearts and our minds so we can learn not only with our minds but retain inside our hearts inside our souls so we can receive the healing that we need most important one, the healing of our emotions, of our minds, of our spirit. May Jesus bless all of us in our meetings. Thank you so great. Thank you, Edmara. Thank you very much. Got a, got a good start, right, in our energy. And we open, we try to open randomly the gospel according to spiritism to get an inspiration for the what, what to talk, right? And today we got chapter 11 of the gospel, which is the major commandment. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And um, I find it beautiful to talk about it. I think it's so easy to understand, but we're going to talk about why we uh, why we why we why we uh, struggle so much to uh, to to deal with this. Like, here's the deal: what is the most important commandment? I mean, actually, the only uh, part of the gospel where Jesus said the greatest commandment, right? Because here's the thing: if something is the greatest. Is more important than the others. There's many teachings, right? There's many teachings. But when you say something is the greatest, what do you mean? It's the most important thing. And in the Gospels, right, so if you think about uh, uh, Matthew, it's very well captured in the Bible. The greatest, they ask Jesus, right? Jesus, what is, uh, you know, Master, what's the greatest commandment? And he was very clear to the answer. If you're not familiar with it, I'm going to say it. It's like, goes like this. Love God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, right? And like it, which means the same importance, the same level. Love thy neighbor, love your neighbor, as you love yourself. Period. That's it. That's it. That's the greatest commandment. The part about God, I think we connect, but we don't understand God. God is something that transcends human understanding, right? In order to understand God, we have to understand the universe. And we are starting, right? We're just starting. I don't know if you guys follow science. We have a new 
telescope in space. It's called the Webb, um, uh, James Webb Telescope, which has opened up a lot of uh, things we couldn't see before with the Hubble. And we're discovering new, new things every day now. Uh, scientists are like running like crazy right now with their, uh, you know, hair on fire. I don't have that problem, but, you know, uh, and trying to figure out to understand what's going on because there's new discoveries. And chances are that in 10, 20 years, our understanding of the universe will change completely because we didn't know things and now we know. So that part, to understand God intellectually, we will need to understand the whole universe. So that's not going to happen. Where we understand God? Heart. We understand, we feel God. We feel the, 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 the emotion of God in our heart. Intellectually, it won't be possible for a while because we have to understand everything in the universe. But look at the second, Jesus knew that, right? So have the connection with God in your heart, in your mind, your soul. There's only one God that connects all of us. We are all children of God, by the way. There's only one God. We're all God's children, right? But the second part is the more important because the second part we can grasp, fully understand. Love thy neighbor as yourself. So you have to love. And by the way, and we have a blessing in Portuguese. I, probably most of us here speak Portuguese, right? In Portuguese, we say, uh, when we translate this commandment, we say, amar ao próximo como a si mesmo. In English, they say, love thy neighbor as yourself. In Portuguese, there's no doubt. Because who is the próximo? Whoever is next to you, right? It's a very... In English, the word neighbor might have a connotation that's only those that live close to you. It's a little risky on the English side because my, thy neighbor may be, who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is the person that lives next to you. You have a house, you live in a house. Right? Who is your neighbor? Who lives who are close to you? Which might exclude people that might not be your neighbor. And I had this intuition many times and I was thinking, oh my goodness, English people got, people that speak English got a, a curveball because this is not as clear. In, in Portuguese, it's very clear, possible. There's no discussion. It's anyone that's close to you, right? But in English, they got it. And then, you know, the explanation they gave to me to talk about is like this. Where's your real house? If you think about where you really live on earth, you, it's not really in your house because you can change houses, right? You may move in a place sometimes, you may be, and you may move, right? You may go somewhere else, and your neighborhood changes and so on. What is the neighborhood that never changes? When you, as long as you are a nerd, your body. You're living in your body right now. But you're not going to be there forever. This is just a passage. This is an experience you're going through. So your neighbor is whoever is next to your body. That's the beautiful interpretation. But many people sometimes don't get it. Yeah? The, the neighbor is everybody. So that's all there is to say about the gospel. This is it. Love thy neighbor as yourself. It's the expression to do. It's simple, right? To understand it. But what's the problem? It's very easy to say, but very, very hard, difficult for us to live, to live by that example. And that's what we believe Jesus, when he was in the flesh, lived, right? Because that, in, when, you, when you get it, when you understand the gospel and you say, okay, I want to do this, I want to be happy, I'm tired of the suffering, I'm tired of the pain, I'm tired of being lost, and I get this, this is the major commandment, I'm going to try to do it. I believe it, and I'm going to try to implement love in my life. Is it an easier, easy path? No. First things first. If, can you imagine a place where everybody loves? Like imagine a place where you, if you could come visit a home or, or a, 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 you know, a community and you walk in and everybody loves you. <coughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? It would be, I mean, I, I, the problem is, it's even hard for us to imagine that. We can easily imagine the opposite. Imagine going to a place where nobody likes you. Nobody has an affection towards you. Everybody's harsh to you. This is normal. Where earth is closest? 
Are we closest to the loving beings all around or the not caring beings, indifferent or even negative towards you? That's where we are on earth. Earth is a harsh place because we still are not spiritualized. We don't believe that we are children of the same God. We don't believe we have the same value. We don't believe we are all in the eyes of God the same. We create all sorts of differences. We, create, we split ourselves in race, we split ourselves in religions, in political, even political beliefs, sexual uh, expressions, uh, you name it, financial conditions, social classes. We split ourselves. We're all split, right? And if you're not in my group, so sorry. If you're not in what I believe you are, so sorry. So people that decide to live the gospel, unfortunately, don't have an easy time on earth. And that's why Jesus told us, my kingdom is not of this world. And that's what he told us. So this is not going to be easy. This is not a walk on the park. Even today, we are much better than we were 2,000 years ago. There's a lot of good stuff going around. By the way, some people sometimes think that we are getting worse. We're not. There's a lot of good things happening. But we still have a lot of hate and a lot of uh, uh, not caring for each other. Right? And uh, that's why when you embrace that path, and you start caring about people, and you understand that first, this commandment Jesus gave us, many people understand it as religious, if you believe in God. From our perspective, that's not necessarily actually, it could be religious, but it's much more than that. We believe this commandment is the way to live life because that's the way the universe is. And what's the little detail that most people don't get it about the universe right now? In our time right now, most people believe that life is the flesh, is the body, is the biology, is the brain. So your life is from when you're born all the way to when your body stops functioning. That's life for you, for most people. We fundamentally See, and I think science is very close to get to that as well. And it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to take five years, ten years, a hundred years, because science has its time. They're going to find the component of our lives, what we call spirit or soul, whatever you want, name you want to give it. We don't see an end for that. So truly, all of us, we are living here right now in the, in the body in an experience that will last some amount of time. For some, it's going to be longer. For others, it's going to be shorter. But no matter what, you and I and all of us and all the people you have around you, they will live. And they're going to be alive 500 years from now, 100 years from now, 200 years from now. So all the people we have in our lives right now won't die. Their bodies will, but not them. Do you understand the impact of that? If that's true, life is completely different than the grinding and the competition and the stuff we are dealing most of the time right now. Because all the people around us will stay alive like we will. The relationships are for the long run. Right? And what is the best type of relationship that there is? A hate one, a full of hate relationship, or a relationship opposite, full of love? No matter how long it takes, and that's what Jesus is telling us, right? Because, you know, this commandment I gave you, love thy neighbor as yourself, makes total sense if life never ends. If life was short, and I apologize for that, maybe you guys would still do the love you wouldn't understand it. But for me, I'm, I'm very practical. If I thought life would end and I would never see any of you again, I would never see my, life, my wife, my kids, and this was just a passage, I'm sorry about that. I would totally make sense to just live a life and burn everything and just have sensations, get all the money, get all the, 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 the things for me. Selfish. You have my sensations, right? Because life is going to end and I'm going to die and I'm going to disappear. 
life live and live and burn. I mean, live. It's better to live a little bit and full of pleasures, and you know, all for me, than living a long life of pain. It makes no sense to me. But, but sorry about that. that. That's my. I know some people that look at me and say, "No, Anisio, even if life would end, I would still do the right thing." Not me. Not me. I'm here because I truly believe we don't die. I truly believe we don't die. I'm going to be talking to you 100, 200, 300 years from now. And I'm going to talk to all the people in my life. Every single one of them. I believe I'm going to meet my wife long past when we're dead. My kids, my family, my, my, my parents, even the people that are complicated to me right now. The ones that give me trouble. I do. I think so. And that changes the way I relate to everybody. Changes everything. Because now, taking advantage of this person, like if I can get all his or her money in my own benefit, might not make as much sense. Because eventually I'll have to meet this person, I'll be with this person in the future. So, is more, I'm more incentivized to think about them as beings like me. You understand the, the, the incredible difference there is, right? If you see life never ending, and that's exactly what the gospel is. The gospel is the recipe, the gospel of Jesus is the recipe to live a life as if it will never end. Then it makes sense. Then love thy neighbor as yourself, right? is the recipe of your peace of mind, of your happiness. But unfortunately, in the short term, not necessarily. Because right here, right now on earth, the relationships are very difficult. Resources are limited. People are selfish. And people, um, in many situations, they do things really looking at what's going on right here, right now. So here's the challenge for those that wake up to the gospel is you still have to do what's right here right now, but you have the eye in the future, right? So it's like the, the parent experience is very interesting for those that have endured it or are enduring it because it's like how many times you're faced with easy and difficult decisions of raising a child, right? Because when you raise a child, there's the easy decision, do whatever they want, <laughs> right? And, uh, but the hard decision is when you make a decision that you know is better for them, but they don't like it. How many times a day when you're raising a child do you have to make that decision, right? It's like my little one. He, there, he, he's here right now on the internet and the other. He talks to me. Dad, do you love me? Yes, I do. So why do I have to do my homework? <laughs> if I, and he's super clear on that. So if you love me, let me do what I want. You love me. And that's, why my, that's my conversation with him. I love you. That's why you have to do your homework. Because it's for you, not for me. I'm going to be fine. But what about you? You have to get used to doing work, productive work. It's a habit. It's not that school is the most important thing in the world. No. What's most important is to create a habit of doing something productive. Right now is the school what we have. If we didn't have school, I wouldn't have to find something else. I'm so glad that the bla we are so blessed that there, is, there are schools, because they create an environment where you learn to do work, you and you learn to learn things. You expose it's a preparation for your life in the future. You know, of course, he doesn't see like that, right? He see like a torture, <laughs> to to school and be tortured to you know do things that are useless, right? Here it is, right? And you think about, oh, he's a child, right? We adults don't do that. Yes, we do. We have the same problem. How many things we have in our life right now that we think, why am I doing this? But it's a lesson. It's a lesson we're learning. It's a lesson of dealing with difficult people, dealing with people that don't think like us. It's one of the most important lessons on earth is to deal with people that don't think like us. No matter what, I, 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 it's not because I'm a psychic or anything, like, I know you're going through that. Because everybody is. There's 8 billion of us in the flesh right now. Hardly you're going to find two people that think exactly alike. Hardly. Hardly. Even people that have good intentions, we disagree. Even if you have good intentions. Imagine if the people you have around you don't have good intentions. 
or are just trying to exploit it. So it's a lesson we're all going through. We're all learning how to deal with difficult people. Class number one, the first one-on-one -on -one class of Earth. We're all dealing. And what's important for us? It's important for us to know first, it's the long game. Because those people, especially if they're in a, if God has a lesson for us that's really important, that's why he created families or people that we cannot get rid of. <laughs> Usually the people that you cannot get rid of, because some people can get rid of, right? You just, like if you have a bad date, you go, well, delete it. <laughs> you never have that date again. But some people stick around. They become part of our life no matter what. And we sometimes try to delete them. And here they come back. So those situations are usually where the learning, the most important learning it is. And here's something we even study, and so painful when we do the study groups for people that want to, you know, get deeper in spiritism. Most likely, you chose to be with those people before you came here. Most likely. Right? Most likely. Not always, right? But most likely, we chose. Because when we transition to the other side, when the moment our body stops functioning, we see better. When we see, when you, you don't need to, by the way, you don't need to wait for that moment. You can do that while you're here. But the, the key to this understanding of spirituality, the key that opens it is when you see, okay, I'm going to be alive. No matter what happened to me, I'm going to be alive. My mind still exists. And we go on. And so are everybody else. Not easy, but it's, this is the real unlocking of spirituality. Not religious, necessarily. You can be very religious, but still not understand that. But the understanding is that. is when you open the door to a life that never ends and goes on and on and on. As far as we know, forever. As far as we know. So that's where the gospel makes sense. Then, love thy neighbor as yourself is the most logical. And then I get it. Then even someone like me that doesn't connect with it, oh my goodness, that makes sense. Because I have to be with these people no matter what. And we're going to be together no matter what. And uh, no matter how painful the experience may be right now, here right now, how difficult it might be, eventually it will change. Eventually, things are going to get better. We don't know how long it's going to take. But what we, what we control, because we don't control others, right? We control ourselves. But we know that the moment we start seeding the good in our life, eventually we're going to reap it, the consequence of that. Right? And if we see confusion and destruction, of course, I need less to say that that's the same outcome that eventually we'll collect it. Might not be in this life, but we'll collect the outcome of our seating, no matter what. With that in mind, that's kind of the idea. Uh, if you want to get familiar with the chapter, it's a beautiful chapter, chapter 11 of the Gospel according to Spiritism, right, that describes and connects all these teachings. And uh, with that, I think I'm, we're going to say bye-bye to our friends online. See you soon.